Welcome to Ask Stago, expert answers to your expert questions. Hello everyone, welcome to this new episode of Ask Stago, the podcast from Stago. This platform is dedicated to answer to the question that you may have about our products or hemostasis in general. My name is Audrey Carlo. I am Scientific Marketing Manager here at Stago, and I'm really glad to be the co-host of this new episode. To animate the session today, I am joined by Cécile Ourquet, Product Line Manager. Cécile, hello. What is the subject for today? Please. Hello, Audrey. So as you may know, I'm in charge of the digital offer, and we have two uh, websites. Uh, which are Mike Stokes and Qualities. And I noticed on the field that a lot of people had issues to differentiate them. So today we will talk about the purpose and the differences between the EIQC and the EQA methods. Okay, very uh, thorough topic. Thank you, Cecilia. And to answer to the, today's questions, we are glad to have a special guest again, Minlan and Guyane. Minlan, hello. Can you please introduce yourself to our auditors? Hello Audrey, hello Cecile, hello everyone. My name is Min Lan Nguyen. I'm my expert QC product line manager, our Stago Intel Laboratory program dedicated to real-time comparison of IQC results. Thank you, you are the perfect one to answer our question today. So let's jump to our first question. Can you please help us differentiating EQA and EIQC? Um, do they have a common purpose or are they different? Well, as you may know, EQA stands for External Quality Assessment. So in such program, the laboratory has to run a blind sample, so one test only, in order to verify the accuracy of the assay compared to others. On the other hand, EIQC is an external comparison of internal quality control. This means that you will compare continuously the results of your QC points with other laboratory. EIQC is used to evaluate the relative precision. What is the relative? in relative precision. Why do you say so? Uh, well, because the comparison will enable to assess your relative performance and bias compared to a peer using the same QC material lots in real time at any time. Oh, okay. okay. Um, if you may, um, I've got this really good image of a French pathologist. So during a customer meeting, she had this uh, image of you should see your quality methods and program as uh, jump hurdles. You know, this uh, run where you have to run and you have to jump wooden hurdles every few meters. So she said, uh, your daily QC is the starting and the ending of the race. So um, it's like you are going to check the precision of the system if in the beginning and at the end the instrument that the reagent on them is still going well. The EQA is a picture of the jump itself. So like your sample uh, and your patient are the jumps. So it's to evaluate the accuracy at a clear moment. With the EIQC, it's a visualization of the run itself at several moments. So it means that you are ensuring that you are just running in a good direction. Very clear image. So EQA at the time point, while EIQC is more like a trending. Um, mm -hmm. But we know that the confusion between the two quality programs is mainly due to the fact that they are both inter-laboratory comparisons. So maybe, uh, Milan, you can help us better differentiate them? Sure. Well, the EQA is an independent evaluation of the accuracy of your system at predefined times of the year. As you said, participation to an EQA is generally mandatory for accredited laboratory. The goal is to verify that your system provides reproducible and consistent results. No matter where a sample is tested, in your lab or at the opposite side of your country, the patient should receive the same result, right? So EQA results are ultimately used to calculate the uncertainty of your method. I would just mark the point that uncertainty of methods is a calculation that is maybe more prominent in Europe, so UK and France, if you are an auditor from US, for example. Yeah, that's true. And with the EIQC, you're performing a continuous and real-time evaluation of the system's performance. You have to understand that you can have a valid QC today with values falling within the lab's targeted range and still have a problem. So thanks to EIQC, you can realize by comparing with peers using the same lot of QC and same system that your lab's average is way lower or upper than the other laboratory. This approach will help you to see that your system is giving a good repeatability, but that the relative precision is lower or upper than expected. Okay, much clearer. And just to come back on what Cecile mentioned earlier as well about the uncertainty calculation on the opposite, EIQC is actually mandatory as EQA is in the US. Mm. 
that's a difficulty to do like accreditation topics for the worldwide. Yeah. <laughs> As you mentioned, the EQA is a well-known method uh, to check the accuracy. So for that, we can say that it's mandatory in almost all countries. But uh, for the countries where maybe still not, then maybe they need a little app to, to get the interest of the EIQC in the laboratory quality management. Can you talk a little bit more about the benefits? Sure. Well, basically the main benefits of EIQC is that it can give you a real-time image of your current relative precision and trueness thanks to simple statistical indicators. Uh, you know what? I really like what you say. It's just simple statistical indicators because let's, let's face it, when you're working in a lab, a lot of people will see quality like an extra things to do, like extra time, extra money, extra run. Um, I know it's, it's not only that, and we do it to be confident, but it's, it's what it is for a lot of people. Here, you are already running your daily uh, internal quality control. So every day you are doing the third quarter of the work. The only thing that is missing is the platform itself. Exactly, Cecile. And we can see other benefits too to EIQC. The comparison should be available in real time, allowing you to see any drift quickly. Meaningful reports and graphical representation are also very helpful for that. With the EQA, the sample is tested only several times a year and the drift will be visible later. In France, the COFRAC is, for example, asking to detect any tendency before the EQA results and even before the EQA is done, if possible. The EIQC is helping to understand the drift. When you need to understand the system, if the system, reagent and instrument is in default, EIQC is very helpful. Sometimes the EQA sample in itself may be the source of error too, and sometimes it helps to investigate quickly if EQA and EIQC follow the same trend. Mm. EIQC is also helpful to compare the results within your network if you are using a common lot of QC. So very interesting for laboratory networks. And coming to this comment on comparison of laboratory networks, it comes to me again, coming back on this question of uncertainty measurement, um, because usually this uncertainty calculation is done with EQR results. Can we still use EIQC results as well to calculate uh, uncertainty? Based on the recommendation of SHGTA14, it's today mandatory to participate to an EQA scheme. But if the peer group of the EQA is too small or missing for some parameters, that French expert group has validated the possibility to use the EIQC as a primary calculation for both normal and pathological level. So we have to stop here uh, for today, but if you want to learn more about the program, please go on our corporate website to learn more about QualiHace and my expert QC, or don't hesitate to contact your local representative. Yes, thank you, Cecile. You're true. Please do not hesitate to ask anything to us or your representatives. And thank you, Milan. Thank you as well, Cecile. Thank you all mm. for listening. It's now time to close this session. As usual, please feel free to ask and send us any question you may have about this session or any other topics and send it to our email address, ask at and we'll be glad to answer it in the next episode. Thank you again and see you next time. This podcast is brought to you by Stago. Diagnostics is in our blood.